praise the Lord. As praise the Lord. As we were saying that the sacrifice of Christ has perfect us once for all. I want to precise what is redeemed is our spirit. It's not our soul. It's not our body. Our reborn spirit because of the blood of Jesus shed when we believe in Christ our spirit, our reborn spirit is made perfect. Our spirit is made perfect. Our reborn spirit becomes like the Holy Spirit because, and what I can precise, the Holy Spirit dwells in our reborn spirit. And our spirit and the Holy Spirit become one. Is what is written in First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. When we were sinners, we were dead in our sin. As Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood, we have been brought spiritually to life. Spiritually, we were dead in our sins. Through the sacrifice of Jesus, we have been revived. We have been uh, brought to life again. Glory to the Lamb. I want to read something in um, Hebrew 10, verse 8 up to 14. Hebrew 10, Hebrew 10 from verse 8 up to 14. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offering and offerings for sin you didn't desire, nor had the pleasure in them which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I've come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus once for all. We have been sanctified. We have been perfected. We have been made holy, made saint once for all. Jesus did it once for all. And when we continue, in ev and every priest stand ministering day and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices. We are talking about the priest in the old covenant which can never take away sins, as we said it. The sacrifice of the old covenant was just a covering sin in order to cool down the, the wrath of God, but it was not removing sin. Only the blood of Jesus has that ability to remove sin. Verse 12, But this man, after he had offered the one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Oh, glory to Jesus. From that time, waiting till his enemy are made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Oh, glory to the Lamb. We have been made perfect. In Christ Jesus, we are perfect. In Christ Jesus, we are sent. 
We will not become sent after death. No, we are sent. Glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because we believed in Jesus, we are saved. We are no longer sinners saved by grace. We were sinners. When we didn't yet accept Jesus as the Lord and the Savior. Now we are children of God. Those who have received him according to John chapter 1 verse 12. He gave them the right to become children of God. Those who are not born from um, in the fleshly way. You are not born in the fleshly way. But we are born spiritually. Oh, glory to the Lamb. We have been made perfect. Our spirit and the Holy Spirit, they look alike. Oh, glory to the Lamb. The sacrifice of Christ is enough. There is no need of any sacrifices for our redemption. What Jesus did through his blood, that redemption is eternal. That redemption is eternal. According to Hebrew 9 verse 12, that redemption is eternal. Now, I want to tell you that in Christ we have forgiveness of sins. All our sins are forgiven. Glory to Jesus. Jesus dealt with sin issue once for all. Our sins are forgiven. That's why. In Hebrew chapter 8 verse 12, God said, in this covenant we will make, things will be different from the old covenant. The Bible says, it will be merciful to us. The sin that's supposed to just to, to bring us to hell, Jesus dealt with. It has been merciful to us. And once his blood was shed, all our sins, they have been forgiven. Oh, glory to the Lamb. That's why, in that Hebrew 8 verse 12, is clear. The Bible says, our sins, our iniquity, our wrongdoing, all are, they have been forgiven a God. And the God will remember them no more. How God can remember something he took away? Because the blood of Jesus took away all our sins. There is no sin left. All our sins have been taken away through the blood of Jesus. We have the forgiveness of sin through the blood of Jesus. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 12, God said to his children, All your sins are forgiven. Jesus, when he came, he dealt with the sin issue. When he's coming, he will not come to deal with his sin again. He's coming to bring us in his glory, in the glory of his Father. Hebrew 9, verse 27. Jesus, because we are now at peace with God. We made the covenant of peace. What was in the ring, what separated us from God was sin. Jesus dealt with sin issue once for all. We are forgiven. Now we are at peace with God. As you know, God, the covenant does not change. It remains forever. That's why when we read Isaiah, Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54 speaks about the works of the cross. Isaiah 53 is the work of the cross itself. 
Isaiah 54 is telling us about the benefit of what Jesus did for us on the cross. The benefit of, of Jesus' death on the cross is what Isaiah 54 is telling us. Now, I want just to remind you because I'm always talking about Isaiah 54 over and over so that the people of God may understand what is all about to be forgiven, what is all about eternal, eternal redemption. Redemption means to bring back. God brought us back. He brought us back by paying the price. Which price? The blood. The blood of Jesus was shed once for all for our sins. Now let us listen to the prophet. Isaiah 54. I will take just verse 9 and 10. Is really clear. For this is like the altar of Noah to me. That God is saying. For as I have sown, God took a heart for this covenant as he did with Noah. That the altar of Noah would no longer cover the earth. So have I sown that I would no be angry with you, nor rebuke you. Verse 10. For the mountain shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who have mercy, the Lord who have mercy on you. God decided in Noah's era, when Noah came out of the ark, he offered to God, and the God felt the good aroma of the sacrifices, and God spoke by swearing by himself, as you know. There is a two thing in which it is impossible for God to lie, the oath and the promise, because God is not a man who can lie. Once he promised something, he will fulfill it. And the God, when he swears, he swears by himself. Why by himself? Because there is no greater than him. And when he swears, the thing will remain unchangeable. That's why. When he swears in, in, in Noah era, the rambo appeared. That's why just to say that God will no longer destroy this earth with water. God will no longer destroy this earth with water. Because he swear. And the rainbow is just to show how God is faithful to his covenant. Now, concerning our covenant of peace with him. God said, this covenant will remain forever. The covenant of peace between you and the God, Bazalwa. Between me and the God, between us and the God, will remain forever. God cannot change it. We are forever at peace with God. Because the punishment we deserved, we as sinners, before we receive Christ as Lord and the Savior, fell upon Jesus. Isaiah 53 verse 5. That punishment brought agony to Jesus on the cross. But it brought peace to us. Now we are at peace with God forever. This covenant of peace, God will never break it. No one will break it. That's why there is no fear in love. This God was motivated by love because of his kindness, because of his love. He said they will never take away his love. The love God has for us will never be 
change. It will never be removed. Mountain 